<laughs> if I can get you to gather yourselves, uh, just no one called you yet, Mr. Walfer. You're so, so excited. You're very much so, yes. You're obviously excited everybody else around about you. The final item of business, a member's business debate on motion 15106 in the name of Jeremy Balfour on the Scottish Power Chair Football Association. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. And can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now. And I now call on Jeremy Balfour to open the debate. Mr. Balfour, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, this afternoon, I have the great pleasure of opening the debate on the Scottish Power Chair Football Association. I have incredible support of all the work that SPFA do and have been doing to see the growth and development of the sport, both within Scotland and internationally. I would like, uh, on behalf of, I'm sure, the whole Parliament to take this opportunity to welcome Ryan Galloway, who works for SPFA, and a number of players who are watching this debate from the public gallery. The Scottish Powerchair Football Association is the official governing body of Powerchair Football in Scotland, which was only formed back in 2015. Some of its various roles include organising competitions and events and promoting and participating in the growing sport of Powerchair Football. Powerchair Football is a unique sport that provides opportunities for people with a high level of impairment to access the game of football. The game is for anyone who uses a powered wheelchair or those who have limited movement in a manual wheelchair. The, play, the sport is uh, fast paced, dynamic, and allows all ages, disabilities, and genders to compete alongside together. Indeed, players range from 12 uh, to 58. Um, a, a few of my colleagues, including uh, uh, Brian Whittle, took part in um, a Sunday afternoon game uh, last year, and I'm sure Mr. Whittle uh, will give us his experiences later on. The game comprises of two teams, each made up of four players, who use power chairs equipped with foot guards to attack, defend, spin kick football in attempt to score goals. There are two national competitions, the SPFA League Cup and the Scottish Cup plus the development of a national squad and the desire to see the sport go increasingly internationally. And I'm pleased that later this year, uh, some international games will be taking place. There are around 70 players who are currently involved in the sport throughout Scotland. Indeed, here in Lothians, we have the Lothian Wolves, who were established back in 2016 by Lothian Disability Sport, and have seen tremendous success we regularly train at Heriot Watt University, and this hard work by the players and the coaches has obviously paid off as Chris Jackreen, who only started playing the sport back in 2016, was recently selected for the first ever Scotland squad in Powerchair Football. This is a fantastic feat, and with my natural bias, I wish Chris and the team every success in the years ahead. Research commissioned by Sports Scotland and the Equality and Human Rights Commission identify that disabled people in Scotland are less active, have poor experience of school PE and less likely to participate in sports as adults. This is something from the SPFA, along with its players and other sporting organisations, are trying to tackle with sport. They want to raise awareness of power to of football through many partnerships, intellect, interlinking the health sector, the voluntary sector, the sports sector, among others, to see it more accessible for all. Since the FPFA's creation, Powerchair Football has seen a huge rise in its popularity and there's a clear trend to see the work expanding through volunteers and others. One thing I would like to highlight is the desire to make Powerchair Football accessible to all wheelchair users. Given the importance of sport for a person's well-being, I fully support the mission and drive by the organisation to see this happen. However, there are barriers that are preventing this from happening and these need to be addressed. The way that wheelchairs are set up, the speed that they work at, is something that stops people playing. And too often, health boards across Scotland have a no-do attitude and they should be far more positive. The second is in regard to sports centres across Scotland. 
Although there are centres across the country that can accommodate a single football team, there are very few venues, in fact only four in Scotland, capable of hosting multiple teams, which is absolutely essential for the creation and maintenance of league and national cup competitions. Any tournament that requires the use of at least two courts with additional space needed for viewing, officials, players to move around in power chairs safely. Further to this, there's a need for changing places toilets. Even now, the current home in the Park Sports Centre in Stirling is lacking accessible toilet facilities. Our own Lothian Wolves here in Lothian also don't have a change in place toilet given to them at Harriet Watt. It would be great if sporting centres such as Harriet Watt and the one in Stirling would consider adding these type of toilets to the places that they have. They have access to a mobile hoist, changing bench, which fits with one accessible toilet, but leaves little room for carers and safe transfers. This is totally unacceptable and a huge barrier to those who would like to play power chair football, but cannot access it because they do not know the simple fact of how they're going to be able to go to the toilet. I support the call to see existing sport venues updated with changing places toilets. I'm pleased to report that an amendment put down by myself in the current planning bill has been passed with cross-party support advocating the building of changing places toilets is suitable for all new sports centres. This is a positive step of progress for increasing accessibility for people with disabilities and I hope will pave the way to create more accessible and an inclusive society. However, that will take time and I would still urge sports centres which are up and running at the moment to look at this issue seriously. The players, members, volunteers are, are a class act and are certainly are something for Scotland to be proud of. I would therefore urge Scottish Government to continue to invest in disability sport, in governing bodies to facilitate to help provide the infrastructure needed for cultural change and ultimately for support and encourage disabled community involvement in sport. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. Thank you very much. Open debate, speeches are four minutes. I call Bruce Crawford, we followed by Brian Whittle. Mr Crawford, please. I, I thank you, President Officer, and can I also congratulate Jeremy Balfour and thank him sincerely um, for securing this debate on this important issue um, this evening. As the motion we are debating today points out, the peak in my constituency is the home of Scottish Power Chair Football. I know from those who work at the peak, which is part of the active Stirling portfolio, they have a pride in the provision of an array of inclusive sports activities suitable for people across a range of disabilities, as well as those obviously with abilities. As, but as Jeremy Balfour rightly pointed out, more needs to be done on issues such as changing places and toilets. Now, I understand with regard to power chair football in particular, classes started in association with Stirling Riverside FC last August. It's an accessible sport to anyone who uses an electric wheelchair, which if I've got the technicalities right here, Mr Balfour requires a bumper, allowing the player to dribble, pass and shoot, something I could never manage when I was playing football myself. Mm. And I like the way that Jeremy Balfour described this in his speech. Uh, with the support provided by the Scottish uh, Power Chair Association, there are now weekly classes of the sport with monthly league fixtures taking place at the peak. And it's clear that power chair football has taken off in a significant way in the Stirling area, whilst also opening up opportunities across the country. And despite the, the, um, the improvements that are required, all those involved, I believe, in this initiative deserve to be commended. President Officer, uh, Jeremy Balfour covered a lot of ground in his speech about the specifics around power chair football. So I'd like to use my contribution to this debate to look at the wider offering of disability for sport in my constituency. The Stirling Wheelchair Curling Club, for instance, is also based at the peak and is open to adults of any age. It gives members the chance to take part in full-length curling, short curling, indeed competition curling. Full membership is just £28. The club trains on a Wednesday evening. And I know that Active Stirling are also open 
to their sports classes to people who have physical, sensory and learning disabilities. And they're currently, swimming classes are being run on a Friday evening at Stirling High School. Each class is being supported by qualified coaches who can adapt to each class to the needs of the, the children who take part while developing their swimming skills. Beyond the activities provided by Active Stirling, Stirling City All-Stars provides recreational football for adults with disabilities in Ratloch Community Campus. And this involves weekly coaching session by volunteers and the club gets involved with tournaments up and down the UK every year. Members pay just 20 pound a year in membership fee and this includes social events. Now the National Swimming Academy at the University of Stirling also benefits many of my constituents and the facility provides competitive swim coaching to junior swimmers with a physical disability. It's available to young people aged over the age of nine with land training available before swimming sessions on the poolside. Now Stirling has a well-deserved international reputation for developing local athletes. It's clear that a lot of work is going on to ensure that people with disabilities get the benefit from the widest possible range of activities. However, it's also clear that a lot more work needs to be done and undertaken to include as many people as possible with disabilities in sport. I think it's true to say that the more we can work together to achieve this, the better we can improve the confidence of those with disabilities in the local sports ser services. The level of inclusion is not only good for physical health, but also mental well-being. So I'm delighted this evening we've had the opportunity to come to the chamber and share some of Stirling's experiences on this topic this evening. And in conclusion, can I again very, uh, thank very, very much Jeremy Balfour for bringing this important topic to the chamber. Presiding officer. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. I call Brian Whipple, Whit, Whipple, Whittle. So I beg your pardon. To, <laughs> to follow by Jackie to Bailey, things. Mr. Whittle. My answer to me, thanks, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, can I say, um, as a, a seasoned power chair footballer myself, um, I uh, <laughs> welcome uh, this debate and congratulate my colleague uh, Jeremy Balfour for bringing this this, this debate uh, uh, to the chamber. Um, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't long into this, th uh, this job when I had the opportunity and invited some of my, uh, my colleagues to come along and take part in, in power chair football with the Usher Tigers uh, down in air. And uh, I, I, it was interesting uh, that, that, uh, to suggest that John Scott and I could be in the same sports team, uh, along with Colin Smith. And uh, we were uh, uh, ritually shown up by... Uh, <laughs> The power chair footballs themselves. It, 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 it was it was a real pleasure to be part of that. To see to see the way that um, uh, the, 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 those those teams trained together and how they put us to the sword uh, with with oh, I a great deal of glee. I then managed to organise a, a parliamentary team to go along to the peak in Stirling, uh, as Bruce Crawford has said there, where we we uh, did an exhibition match during the Scottish Championships. And uh, we played our joker card, which, of course, is Alexander Stewart. Uh, uh, and now he has the nickname of Davros, um, because, in, uh, and I have video evidence of this, in his attempt to take a penalty, he manoeuvred his chair back and forward and sideways and round about and spun around there like a little top, and the ball stayed exactly where it was. <laughs> uh, and and I, I say I have, I'm quite happy to share that video evidence with anybody that would like to like to see that. And of course, the unflappable uh, Dean Lockhart uh, also took part in that, and it was interesting to to watch him spinning around there and and going in no general direction at all. In fact, I'm quite sure during the game in his attempt to manage his power chair, he he actually moved postcodes. Um, it was. Um, and within 10 minutes, we were beaten 6-0, uh, which is, 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 is a lesson to anybody who's taking part in sport. If you're going to take part in sport, you have to train to do that sport. And these, uh, and these athletes do exactly that and train as hard as anybody else. I think one of the things that, that, that highlights is for me uh, is, is barriers to participation. And, that, and that, that can be applied across any sport at all. And in particular with, with, uh, with the Perth Chair footballers, I think one of the things that struck me as they talked about was the, the, the ability to, to, to get to training and to get to the facilities, the transport that's required uh, uh, to, to, to take the, the, the equipment and the, the, their, power chair, their power chairs to the venue is something that, that uh, is one of the big barriers to sport. And that's something we need to, we need to consider. 
the equipment they need uh, to go there, and also, as, as Jeremy Valfer has, has very eloquently suggested, is the venue itself uh, and what's required at that. So, like any, like any sport or any activity, it's important we look at uh, the barriers to participation and break these down to give as many people the opportunity to participate as possible. I think also one of the things I did want to, uh, to, to discuss, as I always do, is, is the, the, the importance of that access to the opportunity and that ability to be included, that inclusivity, which is so key, uh, 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 one of the key pillars of health. Um, I, I, I'm, I've been lucky over the, over the piece, over the while, to, to coach people with, with, with so-called disabilities. I, I, I still have some just now, and they train uh, uh, along with the rest of my squad, uh, they don't get shown any special treatment. And their, their approach is the same as any other athlete. Um, every single athlete that I work with has, has some kind of special need uh, that's individual to them. And you know, whether you're in a wheelchair or whether you have some sort of physical disability or whether you have a mental disability, the approach is exactly the same. And, and, and that's exactly what, uh, what uh, uh, any athlete of any, uh, any description would want. So this idea of, 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 of somehow approaching this sport in, 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 as a different, in a different way from any able-bodied sport is something I'd like, to, I'd like to break down that kind of barrier because I always think disability is a misnomer. It's all about ability. If you wanted to talk about ability, you would just have to watch, watch um, the, the MSPs attempting to play that sport and you could see where the ability lay. As I said, uh, we got beat 6-0 would I go back and do it again? Absolutely. It was one of the greatest fun I've had since I've been an MSP. And I say, I'd just like to finish by once again, congratulating Jeremy Balfour for bringing this, uh, this debate to the Chamber and giving us the opportunity to discuss it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Whittle. I call Jackie Bailey to be followed by Alison Johnson. Ms. Bailey, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And let me start by thanking Jeremy Balfour for bringing this debate to the Chamber and declare an interest as the convener of the Cross Party Group on Muscular Dystrophy. Let me also name check John Miller of Action Duchenne for bringing the debate to my attention and phoning my office every two minutes to insist and confirm that I would be speaking tonight. So I'm delighted to do so. Because it is important that we celebrate the work and achievements of the Scottish Power Chair Football Association and the very positive impact they have on individuals with physical disabilities, never mind half the Tory party as well. Um, but when you think about where uh, power chair football started is even more remarkable to see what they've achieved today. Um, back in April 2010, just six players in nine short years has now become the fastest growing disability team sport with over 1,100 participants across the UK, 62 of whom are based in Scotland and play for the Scottish Power Chair Football Association. Now, the Scottish Power Chair football team took part in their first international match, as I understand it, against the English power chair football team in December 2018. The less said about the result, presiding officer, the better. But as I've learned in my 20 years as a Scottish Labour MSP, it's the taking part that counts. Although recent results, recent results, it has to be said, are much more promising. Just days ago, the Scotland blue team came second, the Scotland yellow team came third at a national tournament in Leeds, so everybody had better watch out because they are working towards that top place. And that is indeed without the help of Brian Whittle and his colleagues um, in the power chair football um, tournament that they were playing in. Now, more than half of the players have a muscle wasting condition, which for able-bodied people can seem daunting, demoralizing, even debilitating. But power chair football has given people with complex and varied physical disabilities, the opportunity to play as part of a team at both an amateur and professional level and has allowed them to reach their potential whilst doing something they clearly love and enjoy. A charity close to my heart, Muscular Dystrophy UK, has collaborated with the Scottish Power Chair Football Association to sponsor MD UK Premiership and MD UK Premiership in Scotland until the 2021 season. And the hardworking staff and volunteers at Muscular Dystrophy UK, along with the Scottish Power Chair Football Association, can't be praised enough, in my view, for the welcome space and opportunity they've given to individuals across the UK and in Scotland who may not have discovered their skill for power chair football had it not been for the opportunity presented. 
how chair football brings together people from all different ages, different genders, different backgrounds to form one united team. It brings communities together, it ignores their varying levels of physical ability and bonds them over a shared love of football. That level of dedication shown by power chair players and the physical and emotional barriers that many of them had to overcome to get where they are today shows just how passionate they are about the sport and how deserving they are of every success in it. The transferable skills learnt through playing power chair football include teamwork, include communication, but they will undoubtedly have a very positive effect on every aspect of a player's life. Praise should be given to the local power chair football clubs across the country who year on year have inspired new potential power chair players to take up the sport. That continuous support of coaches, of volunteers, creates a huge amount of positive energy for the players and inspires them to achieve even greater things. Now, a number of overseas power chair football clubs, including the European Power Chair Football Association, has supported the SPFA. Their generous support has helped to buy the necessary equipment for the players and make venues more accessible. However, there certainly needs to be more funding and investment in power chair football. And I'm not going to let the minister off lightly because there are still clubs that struggle to find an appropriate venue and struggle to buy appropriate equipment. Many power chair football players end up having to crowdfund in order to get wheelchairs suitable for the sport, which can cost up to £8,000. So I hope that this debate today, which again I thank Jeremy Balfour for bringing to the chamber, doesn't just inspire potential power chair football players to try it out, but will actually encourage the minister and others to look at how they can provide investment and awareness so that this fantastic organisation can continue to go from strength to strength. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Bailey. I call Alison Johnson, the last speaker in the open debate. Thank you, presiding officer. I think it's fair to say that disability sport in Scotland has had a huge number of achievements to celebrate recently. Uh, wheelchair tennis player Gordon Reid from Alexandria has won an amazing 11 Grand Slams across singles and doubles tennis, uh, most recently at last year's US Open, and also won two medals at the 2016 Paralympic Games. T-34 sprinter Maria Lyle from Dunbar has won a whole armful of medals in recent Paralympics, World and European Championships and Commonwealth Games, including a silver medal representing Scotland at the 2018 Gold Coast Games. In August last year, the UK team won the BC1 Boccia World Championships with a team including three Scots, Stephen Maguire, who Brian Whittle and I challenged um, to a game in the garden lobby. I think we foolishly thought that we might actually have had a chance. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we were soon put right there. Uh, Patrick Wilson and Jamie McCowan. And in March, Scotland will play host to the biggest wheelchair curling event um, outside of the Paralympic Winter Games at the 2019 Wheelchair Curling Championships when it comes to Stirling. And I would particularly like to highlight in this debate the fact that Lothian Wolves play, power chair player Chris Jackwin has been selected for the first ever Scotland squad in power chair football. So I think disability sport is going from strength to strength. We're becoming more aware of the achievements. They're receiving the attention that they, de that they deserve. Um, and here we are today talking about the amazing growth of power chair football and, and you know, adding that to that list of achievements. And I'd like to thank Jeremy Balfour for the opportunity to congratulate the Scottish Power Chair Football Association's work to develop the sport within Scotland. Really pleased we're debating this in the chamber this evening. Now, as someone who's been involved in athletics for almost 40 years, um, it's clear that developing a sport can be really challenging. Uh, there are teams to be established, there are league rules to be drawn up, officials have to be trained and retained, um, we need to find funding for kit and venue hire, and so much more. And there are particular challenges when ex when expensive equipment is involved. It involves time, dedication, perseverance, passion, and even more so when, as with power chair football, the sport is still a relatively new one and there's limited existing support. Now, clearly, this is the fastest growing disability sport in Scotland, so the organisers and the players have the qualities needed in spades. The number of teams playing the sport has doubled in four years, and in that time, the game has gone from being a grassroots organisation to having well-established leagues and a national team. And having watched a little 
you know, ju just on the screen so far, but I will give it a bash. You know, I'm not surprised. It does look great fun, really enthralling, and I can understand why people, you know, get hooked. Um, I understand that the first European Championships Cup, Champions Cup, will take place in 2020, and it'll be fabulous to see Scottish players having an opportunity to take part in that. And then after, the SPFA are, you know, hopefully able to move the sport on even further by hosting the first cup held in Scotland. And I'd like to offer congratulations from the Scottish Greens on that incredible expansion of the sport in just a short time. Now, as colleagues have said, there are additional challenges, the challenge of finding venues that are able to accommodate large numbers of power chair users. As the helpful briefing provided by the SPFA notes, only a few sports centres are suitable for, for the football tournaments. And even the sports home base at the Peak Sport Village in Stirling lacks the accessible toilet facilities needed. So we can and must do better. And although the, de the development of the sport has been impressive, there are barriers to further growth. The SPFA is concerned that there are currently no power chair football teams south of Edinburgh and north of Dundee. And we need to ensure that Scots who want to try out the sport are able to do so wherever they live. And this isn't easy given the complexities and costs in holding power chair football taster days, which can cost between 800 to 1500 pounds. And the SPFA currently has no budget for this. I know it has appealed to the Scottish Government for support with funding and signposting to sources of funding. And I look forward to the Minister's comments on this when he's closing the debate. Um, I also understand too that you know, some players have met with resistance from NHS wheelchair services to adapt to the power chairs so that they can, they can go at the speed needed to play the game properly. And as the SPFA has stated, there's a real opportunity for them to work with the NHS wheelchair service to promote power chair football when, for instance, someone comes to collect a new chair. Um, I know that the um, association have already been in touch with the minister on these issues, so it would be interesting to have an update on that. Um, before closing, presiding officer, I'd like to take a moment to congratulate the Lothian Wolves team who play at Heriot Watt University. They came third in the League Cup in September, are currently five points clear at the Scottish Power Chair the championship, so I wish them well in their campaign for promotion to the Premiership. It's great to see another sport grow and thrive in Scotland. Everyone, no matter their age, disability or background, should have the opportunity to take, to take part in sport professionally and for leisure. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now Colin Joe Fitzpatrick to close the Government. Minister, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I join others in um, congratulating Jeremy Balfour in securing um, this evening's debate. Um, th this is an, an important debate. Before I move on to talk about um, power, power chair football in, in specifics, um, I'm, I'm going to say a few words about um, disabled sport in general, as a, a number of members raised, raised it. Obviously, first of all, we had Bruce Cofford, who um, gave a fantastic advert, advert for the dis disabled sport facilities in the Stirling area. Um, obviously the home of power chair football in Scotland. Um, but it was also good to, to hear Alison Johnson um, reminding us of the significant successes that we've had um, in disability and para sports here in Scotland. Um, there was also a number of points made by Alison Johnson and, and Jeremy Balfour and I think perhaps others about some of the challenges that, that people have in general with, with disability sports and um, I guess the, 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 the access to, to suitable toilet facilities is, is probably one of the most basic things that most of us take for granted that, that you, you would go to take part in a sport and you will be able to use facilities which will be accessible to you and the fact that that is um, not the case for, for, for many people is, is something that I, I, I agree with. Um, Mr Balfour is something that we, we need to look to improve and clearly the changes that I think the Parliament unanimously support in terms of the planning um, bill going through Parliament is, 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 is going to help with that in the future but I, I, do, I do hope that um, across Scotland um, those in, in, in charge of leisure facilities um, are, are, are hearing the, the, the call for, for changing in facilities and if there's um, refurbishment works going on that that is very much the centre because I think that's the only way that we're actually going to manage to make the, the major pro progress here um, is, is if, if that work is, is, 
at the top of, of the list when, when works are going on in our leisure facilities and, and other places um, across Scotland um, because I, I think it's a, ba a basic right of the people to be able to use um, a, a toilet um, when they enter our, our, our public buildings. So hopefully that will make progress. Back, back to um, football. So football is Scotland's national game. It's enormously important to individuals, communities and for the Scottish Government. It doesn't always get the most positive press um, and many of the discussions we have in this chamber um, are about football um, and focusing on the negative aspects. And yes, Scottish football does have its challenges and we're working with, with clubs and football authorities and other stakeholders to address these, but it remains a powerful force for good. Football can inspire individuals and deliver a range of positive outcomes. We see the, the breadth and depth of, of work um, excellent community activity delivered by the Scottish FA, SPFL Trust, Scottish Football Partnership Trust and individual trusts and foundations. It is remarkable right across Scotland. And this afternoon has highlighted the positive impact of our national game is having on people with disabilities. Football is our national game and should be enjoyed by everyone. I think Mr Whittle made the point about making sure there are, there are no, no barriers to to participation in, in sports and that is equally true for, um, for football. Jackie Bailey gave us a brief history of power chair football going back to 2010 and the Scottish Power Chair Football Association was founded in 2015 in response to the growth in the game and Jackie also went on to say how that, that's continued to grow. With the support of the Scottish FA it's achieved a great deal in a short time. It now organises the National League competition, two, two cups, the, the Scottish Cup and League Cup. It's arranged a para-football event last year when a number of players were selected for the Scotland national squad, as we've, we've heard about. Um, it works, its work has helped almost double the number of teams in the country and it's playing an absolute crucial role in the growth and development of power chair football in Scotland. But I do recognise that there is more to do and um, to, 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 to extend its reach. Success, I think, can largely, however, be attributed to the dedication and enthusiasm of its volunteers, some of whom are in the chamber, who are the lifeblood of the association. Sign officer, it's important to acknowledge the work of the Scottish FA has been undertaking in this field. While it may not generate the headlines, it's groundbreaking, leading the way in world football. In 2017, the Scottish FA rebranded its work on disability football as para football. The aim was to ensure greater emphasis on the diverse work carried out by the Scottish FA, including groups dealing with issues like dementia and mental health, as well as creating a stronger voice for the game. The Para Football Scottish National Association will be the first dedicated national association in the world, as well as funding for all member organisations for domestic and international competition, a representative is also eligible for a place on the Scottish FA board as a representative of the non-professional game, meaning disabled football will have its own voice at the top table for the first time ever. And I pay tribute to the SFA and to David McArdle in particular for this commendable initiative. Design officer, like others, I've, I've seen firsthand the positive impact that power trail of football can have. One of my earliest engagements following my appointment as sports minister was to attend the power trail football league cup final on the 9th of September, which was um, won by my local power trail football team, the Tayside Dynamos. Um, but even if they hadn't won, it was still going to be a really enjoyable day. Um, anyone in, in, the, in the chamber and, and colleagues that haven't um, been to a power chair uh, football um, match. I, I highly recommend it. It is as competitive as any other football match, perhaps even more competitive. It has the other complexity of everyone in the room virtually that's involved in the game is, is, um, is our, vo our volunteers and um, we had the interesting situation where the referee was um, giving points against her own son um, and, 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 and it, it was absolutely fantastic, exciting game. And I, I really encourage uh, members to, to go along and show support to their local power chair football 
um, teams. Um, and if they don't have one, then maybe there's, there's other folk that we can get in touch with to try and help support the, 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 the um, development of, of more teams elsewhere. And I know that in some parts of Scotland that, that that's being supported by particularly Clyde, by the, the professional team, and, and I, I commend Clyde for that action. Um, on the 13th of November last year, I also met with uh, John Miller from Action Duchenne that Jackie Bailey has mentioned. Um, John's gran grandchild plays for Lothian Wolves. Um, and our, our discussion, I think it had been originally arranged to be um, a wider discussion about um, support, but it, 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 it became very much, a, and, and most of the, the, the discussion was about Scottish power chair football. And, and many of the issues raised by members today, Jeremy Balfour, um, Alison Johnson and others were, were, were um, very much what that discussion was about, about how we can improve um, and, and support, the support, support the sport going forward. Um, so I take, the Scottish Government recognises the value um, of um, power chair football and I and the Government very much recognise the importance of Scottish Power Chair Football Association and its volunteers. Um, President Officer, I know that the Scottish Power Chair Football Association has applied for charitable status and I hope that this will allow it to access more funding opportunities to further strengthen the game. Much of this has, much has already been achieved in that small time since 2015 when the, the, the association was first formed um, and I have no doubt that the sport will continue to go from strength to strength. The new Para Football Scottish National Association will provide further opportunities when it formally goes live later this year. President officer, in closing, President officer, in closing, I'd again like to congratulate Mr Balfour for securing this debate and to pay tribute to the Scottish Power Chair Football Association and its volunteers for their dedication to this excellent cause. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament.